Tu nella okma palo. La kir senku kulipas kukojan moten olifu olif. Do is ku af kerpe ruk. Fuste ku apalo. So we have a Malthian. Okay, the the culture. I don't think we've named the culture yet. My God. My God, and he's gone. The the culture is, oh wait, the Dinar. They're called the Dinar, and there are two subsects. The uh, backstory, there was a rift. The culture split. So you have the Amalthian Dinar, and <laughs> because I'm very creative as a namer, Unamalthian Dinar. Uh, but we say Unamalthian because that's more exotic, right? <laughs> so you have Una and Ama, right? Is that what we're calling mm -hmm. them language wise? So let's define this a little bit, Kevin. Who are the Amalthians? Who are they? So yeah, they're by? the. I mean, if you're like they're they're basically, uh, uh, so they were a unified culture, a unified society, uh, thousands of years ago. The Amalthians had a start disagreement with uh, uh, the rest of their society, and they decided to leave uh, uh, their land and sort of travel, have this exodus to a to a new land. Um, and so they split apart. It's been what, like 10,000 years or, or thousands of years of development between the two cultures. Um, so you had the ones who stayed, they speak Unamalthian Don. Uh, the ones who left and found a new land, they speak Amalthian Don. And uh, so that's the two different dialects we have working together. And we talked from the beginning about sort of wanting to differentiate the two cultures in. You know, obvious ways you'd see in movies. So in the way they dress and the way they act, but still show that they're interrelated. They're, they're still using the same symbols and same ideas. Uh, they still come from the same roots, I guess. Uh, but they've grown into very different ways. And then we had the idea of, you know, we're, we're making up this language. Why don't we make it also distinct? And so when when an Unamalthian is speaking a sentence, you know, uh, and an Amalthian says the same sentence, it's going to sound different. It's going to look different in the performance, too. Uh, and so that's. I think that's kind of what, what our logic was there. It was sort of serving the idea of differentiation, but also showing relationship between the two cultures. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of like symbolism and theme that we could get into, but we won't because that's, you know, we're not going to, that's too much. But as it relates to language, it was like they were opposed uh, com completely. Like up was down and down was up, right? For them. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we, we got around to like talking about the differences in the dialects or really, um, yeah, the differences in the dialects and the service of those, we started talking about like their fighting styles um, as a, kind of as a starting point. Well, one of them was uh, the Unamalthians don't um, acknowledge the sky, they acknowledge the ground. So one thing that I really liked was when we were rehearsing with them, you told the actors when they were speaking Unamalthian to speak it down into the ground, or, or Amalthian, is that right? I can't remember, Wh whichever one. You, you told them to speak it down like the words were supposed to hit the ground, come out of their mouth and hit the ground. Mm -hmm. um, what a strange direction, but really effective. Like, I thought that was really effective and they could, they could spit their words downward, you know, versus if mm -hmm. you wanted to angle your words upward. So that was part of it. That's more like religious. But if we're getting into the fighting which i think informs a lot of the the shape of the words anyway uh for the unamalthian dinar uh they're so, look they're fighting with swords look look at the screen everybody they're fighting with swords so it's this this or this that's the unamalthian shape we were trying to get across with the words mm -hmm. and the amalthians we decided being sort of the pacifist that they got away from these crazy dinar uh who are big fighters they probably wouldn't have a basis for fighting. It would all be about redirection. Uh, so this, you're redirecting, you're, you're parrying with your words. So their words are round and the Unamalthians are straight. So talk us through kind of how that manifests in, in the language. Yeah, so really we, uh, working with the actors especially, we try to emphasize like face shapes a little bit and like facial expressions you'd make in pronouncing certain words. And like one of the things I remember uh, like giving them leeway on is sort of they could play around if they could ever turn an O 
into an E and vice versa. If they're speaking an Amalthian or a Amalthian Don, uh, like I said, go for it, you know, because that, that basically just changes the, the shape of the face. Um, and like for the Amalthians, we really tried to emphasize like O sounds. So like sounds that round the mouth uh, more so and sort of because that's that's kind of uh, it's you know, it's, it's hard to essentialize this, but that, that's kind of a, a way that language is more open or warm, like more like the, the more comforting sounds are more associated with that. Uh, so that suggests more like pacifism in the culture, maybe a little bit too. Uh, and like, for, but for the Onomathians, they went the opposite directions. They were more martial and much more like, uh, more likely to bear the teeth. So we really try to emphasize the E sounds uh, and give the actors plenty of opportunities to like, you know, really kind of snarl and show their teeth to, to finalize words and stuff like that. All that said, I kind of wanted to throw some words at you uh, that are in Don and give you sort of uh, the Onomath or the Amalthian and then the Onomathian and the definition of what the word is. And then we could talk about sort of why that particular word split. Um, so, and just kind of world build around like what led the Amalthians to say this differently from the Onomathians and sort of why they emphasize things in this way. Um, it can be anything, just random things that can happen too. just kind of have fun with it. So first word I have just kind of lined up here is, uh, hooks. That's the Amalthian pronunciation hooks. And I've, I've transliterated as, uh, H U X or H U U X to use. Uh, and then the Unamalthian would be yeeks. So you got kind of the hooks with the O and yeeks with the, with the E sound. Uh, and those two, those words, or that one word, pronounced differently, means yet. I mean, so I'm curious. Yeah. DS one. Why would the Amalthians say hooks and the Unamalthians say yeeks when they're talking about this word yet? Um, well, beyond the obvious, hooks, h u u x, uh, is doing that. We talked about that. Hooks, uh, mouth, mouth shape. I want to say yeet. <laughs> Yeeks, um, other mouth shape. But I also think they almost feel like they're different parts of the timeline. Um, like, hooks sounds almost like yet to come, maybe? Like, it, it sounds uh, more hopeful than yeeks. Yeek seems, seems final to me. Seems uh, like a mm -hmm. punctuation. Whereas hooks sounds like promise of more. Um, I don't know. That's just my first reaction. I like that, yeah. And, it's, and like the word yet is, is related to time, you know, too. So it would sort of make sense that they, they'd be coming at it from different perspectives. So it's like a forward-looking word, but hooks more so would be like a... Yeah, more holistic or something. I, I'm holistic trying to find or abstract. For it. uh, it's yeah. more like set out of ab abstraction. Whereas I feel like the Unamalthians, who again are the the bad guys, I think they, outside of their own moment, there is no yet. You know, mm -hmm. it's well, like they'd be. They're here. They're, this is what's important. They'd be. They'd really emphasize punctuality, right? Like they'd mm. really, you know, you got to be on time if you're around them and it's really important to that things have a structure and things have a re repetition, I guess, right. uh, with their, you know, be, get to work on time attitude, I guess it will be their recurrence kind of thing. is all, they're all yeah. about that. And the Amalthians mm -hmm. are not, I, you know, a, a fleeting moment might be a once in a lifetime thing. And they're, they're fine with that. But the, the, mm -hmm. the dinar, I think want to uh, be in control of it <clears throat> more so. So like yeah yeah hooks is a much softer word than yeeks somehow to me. Mm -hmm. Also, General yeah, Hux, so kind of... one of our favorite characters in all of cinema. Remember what I said about JJ Yikes. earlier? I'm being satirical. I hate him. <laughs> but yeah, cool. All right, that clarifies that. I like that idea a lot. And that's kind of more mindset. So that's kind of just representing sort of what they're what they're feeling about time and and space a little bit too uh that could be something too we look into like uh like if we build them a mythological structure like we talked about them using the same symbols and they basically have the same uh gods so to speak that they they adhere to or they develop their culture um so like maybe we could work it into something like that like it uh that there's a god related to that word i'm kind of being general here but like you know just that uh 
they have two very different ideas about. They have two different, very different perspectives on. Yeah, I would say if we're talking about like uh, like pantheons or, or deities, I think the Amalthian Dinar would understand that that type of entity would be like um, more everywhere, you know, mm. would be in the world versus the Dinar, the Unamalthian Dinar would see a, an entity like that I have no idea who we could be referring to uh, as singular, a singular point of power, um, you know, that you can rally around versus like the Amalthians would be like, oh, but God is everywhere as in all things. Interesting. Is that what you're speaking yeah. to? Or, or... I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized I'm not sure if I was going to read on screen. It might not. I mean, I think it's just, this is just for us to get a sense of why the words differentiate. Yeah. yeah. I forgot my own rules. Sorry about that. I forgot <laughs> on a activity for a second. <laughs> like, wait, people are like, are we going to get this, this on? Uh, are we going to have like somebody break this down while somebody's watching the film? Like, uh, <laughs> DS2, a, a, a you commentary. should know that most of the work we do on our calls, no one's going to know about. <laughs> yeah. Right. We certainly hope not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> jumping to the next word, and this is kind of related, but it's more, I think, spatial, but we can talk about sort of how it fits in uh but beruk which is the amalthian pronunciation and brik which is the unamalthian pronunciation of the word cycle beruk and brik um this fulfills so many things to me one of them is very superficial and you're not gonna like it but it's very much my way of naming things on my own so get over it <laughs> but beruk uh is in the, in the movie right oh uh-oh mm -hmm. i'm not in the movie no more uh, Moonbora says Beirut. Um, that to me is really earthy, and it means cycle. So, like in the in the context of the Amalthian culture, as also in the film, the cycle is a really important theme. The cycle of trees and soil and sky and water and how all those things intermingle as part of a singular cycle. The cycle of life and death um, is really important too. So Beirut, just viscerally, it has that thing with the mouth shape, but it also feels really like rounded Beirut. It also feels downward. It feels earthy. Um, all of those things are really great to me. And I feel like that has a lot more um, depth to it than what I'm about to say. Breek is like break. And that really excites me because the Unamalthian Dinar would care so little about cycles that they would only want to break such a thing. Something that has perfect symbiosis or balance or is a perfect circle, they would not like that. They would almost see that as asymmetrical in the way that we do. So like they would wanna break the cycle. That's very superficial, but I really like that in words, uh, in, in films. Like the almost the simpler, sometimes, not all the time, the simpler and fewer degrees sometimes makes me really excited. Well, that speaks to like goals too, I think for both cultures. Cause like the Amalthians or we would say would like preserve cycles. Like they would respect yeah. them and learn them and learn how they work. The Unamalthians probably not so much. They establish their own rhythms and nature better bend or it's going to, it's going to break. Uh, and so that, that's kind of, uh, that speaks to their motivations too. Um, I, I just noticed too, like, uh, you know, Beirut is like two syllables, whereas Breek is like a one syllable word. And that could be a trend we play with too. Like, if we want to emphasize that the Amalthians either developed a second syllable or really kind of uh, preserved that from the language, whereas the Unamalthians uh, were more likely to, to break those words or to like uh, simplify them and, you know, really kind of uh, flatten them, I guess, with like the one syllables possibly too. Not all across the board. Of course, Unamalthians are going to say words that have more than one syllable, um, but for special words like this that, that have like a meaning in both cultures, maybe they maybe they would skew those more toward the one syllable impact yeah. words, you know? Yeah. I like that. So cool. That could be something we play with. Uh, next up, I wanted to do some words that we've talked about not changing, that both cultures say this word, and it has not changed. 
and as a, as a world building tool, I think that, that interests me just as much as the words that have changed. Because why have they been preserved? Why do both cultures uh, see it the same way? And uh, one word we have is folk. I've got that as F O L C, uh, and that means dust. And just uh, you know, what, what do you think about that? Why why would that word not change? Because it does kind of have that like uh, a mouthian feel right away. It's got the O sound pretty obviously. So you, I thought about maybe changing it for to the Unamouth Althians to a more E sound, but uh, why do you think that we've decided to make that more concrete? Oh God, um, I guess because like, how would that be different to either one of them, right? Like, it's almost like my mind goes to death. Uh, and like we'll all be dust like that's sort of our <laughs> ultimate form before we're like reintegrated into stardust you know like um so i think because it's such a core such a prime form that it couldn't be split uh if that makes sense like it's 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 yeah. almost like elemental I remember us talking about this before, but I have no idea what the answer was back then. I guess I can only react in the moment. Because uh, <laughs> I almost wonder, I almost thought that we did split this one. Because didn't I want to call it fuck? But we went against that. I think we decided it was prime. Or, or that it was unchanged. <laughs> that may be a different word. I gotta go look back and see. I, I remember the, the fook, I think. We had the W, or the two U's. And then, yeah. I or something. I don't, think, straight, I don't think it was folk. Maybe it was. Fuck. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? But again, like, we're so flexible with this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, dust as a concept that intrigues me that they would keep that the same, that it would stick, uh, that, like, because they do have di very different ideas and very different values as far as, like, when you compare soil to sand. Like, the yeah. Unamalthians, they, they like sand. You know, they, they, they live for sand. Um, and because it's dead and because it's sort of inert and not being recycled. At least in their eyes, they don't see it being recycled, except for more sand. Uh, but they really hate the dirt. Like, they really hate the idea of a living, sort of, you know, life-giving uh, soil, uh, whereas the Amalfians would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And so the, the you know, the difference is there. But dust being sort of different from that, dust is like the leavings of organic matter i guess or that they might view it in that way and so they the the cultures even though they would have different ideas of soil versus sand um dust would be like a unification point for that like everything both cultures even though they're very very different they would both acknowledge well we're all going to go back to dust anyway and they would read that very differently like one culture would read that in a very negative way and one culture would read that in a very positive way i think but like the word staying the same might be might say something interesting about that Okay. Well, your take was great. I, I, I liked your take a lot better than mine. It reminds me, dust is such a word, too, just in our language. Um, it reminds me of the Dark Crystal. It also reminds me of um, 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 his Dark Materials. Um, mm. Dust is like, whatever, a big thing in, in Oh, that. man. Do you remember that movie Sunshine that came mm. out like uh, 2006 or seven or something like that? Danny, Danny Boyle, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Like they go, like the sun is dying and they try to go on a voyage to restart it with a big <laughs> nuclear bomb. That's a fun concept. Yeah. Uh, but I remember them going and they like land. They meet a, a ship that tried to make it and stopped for some reason. They don't know why. And this, they, they come up next to it and they want to like get its bomb just in case theirs fails. So they have two. Uh, but they dock and they get on board that ship and it's dusty. I just love there, there's there's really cool like uh, set dressing in that movie and that, that they get on the scene, the the ship and it's dusty and one of the guys is like what the hell's all this dust doing here and uh, another guy says oh you know 98 percent of dust is human skin and <laughs> just that like and I think he was bull I, I listened to a commentary a while back on that I think he was bullshitting a little bit. But it's still like stuck in my head as like, oh my god, he's right. They're walking through like human skin, and that's freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> um, there's a lot of moments in that movie that are really, really cool like that. But yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. Dust has that just that feeling of just oddness. It floats through the air. It's you know, but it's from the stuff that's dead, and it's a reminder of death. I guess that you know, dust to dust. That's kind of yeah. the whole idea behind that too. Um, but uh, 
yeah, sorry for that tangent, but that just popped no, in my head. No, yeah, like a, no. I think strange scene. <laughs> yeah, I need to rewatch that. I have that on iTunes, so just keep going to show uh, DS3, as we call him. Yeah, <laughs> I think he'd enjoy it. Oof. All right, so we covered Dust. Uh, last one I wanted to do as far as just single words is Womu, Time. And again, Whoa. another one that, uh, yeah, another one that's just a Malthian through and through, it seems like. But we talked about the Unimalthians keeping it pretty solid. They're, they're going to say Womu, too. And uh, I don't know. What do you think about that? It's because of the Great Mother. Let's talk about this. Both, both cultures share, like we said, they share a goddess almost. Or they think they do. And it's like the Great Mother. Well, their viewpoints, they're looking at this from two different angles, right? So Womu, to me, it's that very petty, shallow thing, is womb. Time, we're in the womb of time, uh, and the the idea is so pervasive to both cultures um, that they they couldn't they couldn't possibly change it because it relates to the great mother. So I, I would say it's one of those words that's attached time, like the great mother is time almost. So like we couldn't we the dinar couldn't possibly change her name, couldn't possibly change the name of the thing that she. Uh, I guess time flows from her, let's say. She's not time, but it flows from her womb. So, like, the, 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 would be, it would be heresy, I think, on both of their parts uh, to change that word. Do you think? Yeah, because, like, don't the don't the Unamathi and Dinar, they think they've met her, basically. Right. They think that she's visited them in physical form and given them the gospel and said, do this. Right. And that's one of the, one of the reasons why the Amalthians left, is they disagreed about that. They think... No, that's not her, and which I mean that that happens in human culture. I guess you have some disagreements, and then one side decides, oh, "I'm going to kill you for for saying I'm wrong," uh, and that's that's kind of what's happened here. But I like that <laughs> idea of them. Of they again disagree so starkly about this concept or just the the meaning of it, but the structure has to stay. Like they both see the womb, even though one of them thinks they're inside of it, and one of them thinks that. They've come out of it. I'm saying some weird shit right now. And I apologize <laughs> for that. But uh, yeah, I guess that does, you know, I guess that's there. One of them sees it as they're separate from the womb. One sees it as they're in the womb, but they still hold the womb. I'm saying that word too much again. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, if the womb, oh, if, if, if the womb is an hourglass, let's say, um, mm. Then, like, one sees themselves in the chamber that's empty, emptying, and one sees themselves in the chamber that's filling. And Womu is the filling or emptying. We're both saying some weird shit right now. So I yeah. hope that that follows. Um, <laughs> yeah, it makes sense to me, man. Uh... <laughs> we, I can tell you, if anyone were watching, they wouldn't be anymore. I think we lost right. them on that one. You see, there's wounds and there's dust and uh, there's cycles and uh, they all make sense. <laughs> we to sound us. like we're these two men out of our minds. <laughs> yes, these two male, the American red-blooded American males, sitting here talking about wombs. I mean, that's uh, okay. <laughs> what do uh, I know let's move about to phrases. it? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's move to phrases real quick and. Uh, Really, not going to do much with these. I just wanted to let you to hear what it sounds like if we do modify some of these words in the way we talked about. Uh, and also to think about like possibilities, like I said with the Borges thing, of if we want to differentiate things and say maybe Unamalthians would be more adjective-heavy when they're speaking or more adverb-heavy, and there's all kinds of ways we can vary that up. Um, but uh, I wanted to read a couple phrases. Yeah, I just have to say, like I do have to think about that a lot. Because yeah. when I was reading Borges, <laughs> when I was attempting, let's say, to read Borges, I was like, that's too much. Like, I would have to sit here for, like, six months and think about it. Like, right. I, in the way he's presented it, because he's, um, well, smarter than me at much. Yeah. And so I was like, hmm? Um, anyway, okay. it would just take some time because, yes. Yes. But I don't know what the answer is yet. Like... Um, I have to become the dinar, you know, and, and really feel it out. 
Right. And we get, we'll get test it out, too. I'll, I'll write some stuff and translate it and see what it sounds like to yes, you are layer supposed certain ideas. You're supposed to be ad- translating layer something ideas. right now, by the way. I don't want to say what it is, but you're supposed to be translating. Like right now? Well, <laughs> kind of. It's in um, the works. It's in the works. Okay, because I'm know. almost ready for that. Just the, the, cool. to be cryptic. Okay. Let's... It's, it's, it's getting there, man. That was a lie. We're in the world of time. Just now. We're in the world of time. We're good. <laughs> I'm about to re- eject DS2 from Womu. I'm about to eject him from the entire plane of Womu. That's an image, isn't it? <laughs> Out of my Womu? Oh, wait a minute. It doesn't actually mean womb, but yeah. Yeah. Is my is my womb my butt? What? Just, let's let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah. How would they? How would the Enomalthians think about that? That's a good, <laughs> that's a good question for next week. Um. So phrases. Let me go ahead and read this in English first. Uh, so one of the phrases uh, I think they may have played in the video is um, translated as returned to be shorn for the next cycle. Uh, it's spoken by Bunbora. And uh, for the Amalthian translation here, I'll try to read this back and sort of get your reaction to it. Olifu to isku of Kelberuk. Olifu to isku of Kelberuk. Is that what he and says? And for the Unamalthian. Sorry, just out of my uh, own curiosity, is that is that is that as right now canon, or is that a change already? Uh, it's uh, it's from the script. He may have altered it a bit when he when he performed it, possibly. Moonbora is canon, so we have to adhere to Moonbora. <laughs> of course we do. Of course we do. O- That's a very amalfi way. Of is That's a very amalfi way. Kel Bedruk. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it's got the ooh sounds in there. It's got that going on. Unamath will be uh, a couple of words are the same. So olifu to isku of kilbrik. So it's got that kind of like that like, like ending feeling for me. Less open. Yeah, like bites at the end. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, olifu, olifu is like what? returned or rejoined. I think. Yeah. Um, I do think that that one wouldn't, doesn't strike me as Una. Mm -hmm. Like it sounds so, I would, I would almost bookend it with the bites, you know, like the Mm. end, the end is so, (sighs) and I almost would want to gnash at the beginning too, like Elifi or Elif, you know, like it would be, that's too basic though. But you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, right. Kind of start with the gnash and end with the gnash. (laughs) Well, could add like a, a K sound in there too. So like uh, like Kolifu or Olifik or something kind of like that. that. That would maybe rhyme too much with it. But yeah, I get what you're saying. So kind of round it out and make it more dangerous. Yeah, like um, like it's a bark. Yeah. More than a, a, a lyric. Because <laughs> that's mm-hmm. kind of how Moonpora delivers it. And that, again, just kind of keeping in the back of our minds, we could alter that. Like a, a synonym for that could be like two adjectives or something. You know, like Olifu could be returned in both languages, but maybe Enomalthians like to say it in a different way. Uh, like, to, like to say it like with a two-word combination or something that is more barking and more... So they have both options, and they typically go for the one that sounds more martial, maybe. Right. So cool. All right. One more quick one. Uh, your mind is quicksand. Are you and telling the, me that my? Uh, are you telling that to me? Or oh, okay, no, that's I'm just what I hear. I don't know. <laughs> you hear uh, right. <laughs> so the Amalthian way of saying this would be umpo toslatu, and the Unamalthian way of saying this might be yempo toslit. Yempo is your mind. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Amalthians would say umpo. Yeah, I really like that. Yempo to sleet. I think that that sounds super, um, super good. That sounds super good. And by super good, I mean super bad. Like it sounds, it sounds like something a villain would say. That's sort of reducing what we're trying to do, but also not. Like um, screenwriting, storytelling is a lot. I'm not telling you this, DS2, because you know that's what I'm telling anyone who doesn't know this. It's about like simplicity in how you translate your ideas. Like you can have really complex, high concept ideas, but 
how they're presented, I think, need to have intuitiveness to it. George Lucas talks about this in designing, like for the visual narrative, when you're when you're when you're giving someone a technology that they've never seen before, and, and we can say this about words too, they need to have an innate understanding within a second of seeing it of how it works. That's how the like the design can be as complex as you need, but the the reading of the design needs to be immediate by the audience. And so a line like "Yimpo to sleet," I think, sounds to me immediately like um, th- this person's worldview is skewed. You know, whoever's speaking this way, they're coming from a different place than the guy who says "Umpo, Umpo to slau," whatever, slau to. Yeah. I don't have my glasses on either, so I'm having to sweat. Um, and I, that's really what I'm after. Uh, apart from the aesthetic, it's the readability um, of character motivations or just characterization. And so I think that's a really good example of what the language can do toward that that goal. Because um, film, why it's my favorite medium is because it's cumulative. You have a thousand things you can throw at someone in a single frame, let alone a second, let alone a minute, let alone a sequence. Um, and as as streamlined as you can get all that information, the more they're going to be able to take in in that frame. So this is like aspirational, that kind of line. Do you feel attacked right now or do you feel empowered right now? Kind of both, which is exciting. Um, okay, I can live but with like, both. I kind of uh, jumping off that too. I think uh, like working with actors too, and sort of giving them opportunities to play, and sort of imagining how they might like just chew up a, a word like this, or kind of play around with a word like this. You know that that excites me. I, that, that kind of uh, you know because that was something I didn't anticipate. You know, making the stuff. I'd never really been around actors before we we shot the thing. And before we were trying to get them to say this weird stuff. And so to see them sort of take it and imagine it in new ways that I couldn't even have conceived of when we originally developed the stuff, that was really cool. And I, 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 that was something I didn't anticipate really enjoying and getting ideas from and seeing what they did with it. So kind of giving them, not just the audience, sort of that, that immediacy, but giving the actors the tools to play with it and be creative with it too. I think that's, a, that's fun to me. Yeah, and that's why um, we work together really well because you aren't precious about that kind of stuff. You get excited to see how stuff almost mutates based on who's got their hands on it. That is not my personality. Um, Mm -hmm. So, like, me not being close to the language. I remember, I think it's in that scene we showed where Moonbora says something like, Akiba, and the word is actually was actually Aki. Uh, Aki... Not a key like in Spanish, but like a key. But he he mm-hmm. bit off. He bit it off with a B. He said Akiba. And it was so in genre. It was so in character. It was so archetypal. And he like he like ignored you. He ignored me. And he said, I, I'm gonna give you a new moment that you didn't count on or want. And it's gonna be better than the moment you both planned for. And so like mm-hmm. you having the non precious, like, yes, change it, make it yours. Um, made for that moment. And me not understanding the language enough to know he was saying it wrong, made for that moment. So uh, I think, I'm think i glad you're like that. I'm glad you want to see <laughs> how how different people engage with it and, and utilize it. Because I want mm-hmm. people to do it exactly the way I tell them to every time, but that never happens. So it's much yeah. healthier to have your viewpoint, DS2, than mine. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? 